Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the drive motor on your dryer. It's a really easy repair. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, the first thing we'll need to do is to disconnect power to the dryer. So either locate the electrical panel, turn off the appropriate breaker, or remove the appropriate fuses, or pull the dryer far enough forward that you can unplug it. We'll also need to pull that dryer out somewhat so that we can lift the main top to access these components. Now with the dryer pulled slightly forward, our next step will be to raise the main top so that we can access these components. Now what you'll want to do is make yourself up some type of a lanyard to support that main top while you're doing your repair. So either use a small piece of light duty chain or some heavy cord. Next we'll take a thin putty knife. We'll come in that gap between the main top and the front panel. Locate the spring clip that secures that. You'll feel the resistance of that spring clip, so just depress it, lift up on the top, and then just hold that up there for now. We'll do the same on the opposite side. Raise that top just beyond vertical. The hinges won't support that by itself, so you'll need to use a lanyard. We'll take out one of these little rubber bumpers on the top of the side panel, and then secure that top. Now once we've done that, we'll next disconnect the wire harness retaining clip from the top of the front panel. And then we'll remove two quarter inch hex head screws that secure that front panel to the sides of the cabinet. Then we'll tilt that front panel just slightly forward. We can access that door switch at this point. We're simply going to lift that away from the bracket that secures it to the front panel. Just spread the little tabs on both the top and the bottom of the switch to release it. And then we'll just tuck that out of the way. We can then lower that front panel. And then we'll lift it off of the two hooks to secure it to the base frame. And we're just gonna set that aside and then go to our repair. Now with the front panel removed, our next step will be to get that drum out of the way. And to do so, we'll need to release the belt from the idler and motor pulleys. So we're gonna reach in on the right hand side here so you locate the belt, and then the idler pulley, and right below it will be the motor pulley. So if we pull that idler towards the right, release the tension on the belt. Just pull the belt towards the front of the dryer. Now we'll get it away from the idler bracket. Unhook it from the motor pulley. And we should have about that much slack in the belt. So what we'll do next is we'll use that belt to support the weight of the drum. We'll lift it up and pull it right out of the cabinet. There'll be a little bit of resistance where the drum sits on the rear drum rollers. simply take that drum and the belt and set them aside. Now with the drum removed, our next step will be to remove that blower housing so that we can remove the blower fan. So we'll take these quarter inch hex head screws out. There are also two 5 16 one that secure it to the base. Lift the housing Oops. and tilt it out of the way. Now next we'll remove this clamp on the outside of the hub of that blower wheel. Just to press it with a pair of needle nose pliers. 
and pull that off. And next we'll need to remove that C-ring. And then we'll slide that lower wheel off of the motor shaft. Now next we'll go to the back of the motor where we can remove the under pulley and bracket, as well as the wire harness and the two retaining screws that secure that motor to the housing. And we can pull that out and change it. So we'll begin by removing that spring from the base frame. Just grasp it with a pair of pliers. Unhook it. We can then grasp the idler arm. Just tilt it up and then pull it straight back. And that will disengage it from the front of the blower housing. So next we'll remove the wire harness. Simply squeeze the two connectors on the side. And pull that harness off. Next, we're going to release this spring clamp at the back of the motor. So use a flat blade screwdriver. Just take one end of that, put a little downward pressure, uh, pushing out on it. Unhook that spring. We'll set that aside. Now we can lift that motor off of the rear bracket. And just rotate it about 45 degrees clockwise and that will release it from the blower housing at the front. And we can pull that motor right out. So we'll discard the old one. Just make sure we clean up this area at the back of the blower housing. And you can see the socket where that idler arm will fit into. It has to go through a hole in the rear base frame and will extend all the way through. To that position. I want to make sure that when we put that bracket on that it stays above that stop. And we'll take our new motor and guide the front end of it into that housing. Once it's fully inserted, we're just going to rotate it to lock it into place. And the switch should be in a vertical position at that point. Take our spring clamp, we're going to hook it onto one side of that motor mounting bracket. And center it over the mounting bushing. And then using a flat blade screwdriver, we're just going to press that down. Until it hooks in on the opposite side. Make sure the slot in that spring clamp is lined up over top of the tab on that motor mount. And then snap it into place. Make sure it's hooked solidly on both sides. We'll then make sure that we have that either arm inserted into the back of the housing if it came out. Make sure it sits above that stop. Slide the spring over into place and we'll reattach that to the base frame. Make sure you get a firm grip on that spring with your pliers and hook it into place. Now if your original motor had individual wires attached to the motor switch you'll need to follow the instructions that came with the kit so that we attach them properly. If not, we simply need to reconnect the one piece wire harness connector. Make sure the locking tabs on both sides engage. And now we're ready to put the blower wheel back onto the motor shaft. Now before we install that blower wheel, 
The next thing we'll want to do is remove that second snap ring from the original motor. That one was in behind the blower wheel. Discard the old motor and slide that all the way back to the groove that is cut in that motor shaft. And that will prevent that blower wheel from going back too far. Now inspect that blower wheel while we have that apart. If there's any signs of damage to that hub, you'll want to replace the blower wheel. Then we'll line up the flat side of the shaft with the flat on the blower wheel. We'll reinstall that second C-clip, as well as the spring clamp. Now we'll position that lower housing cover in place. We'll begin by putting the two screws into the base. Before you tighten them, make sure that the holes with the housing line up. And we'll put the remaining screws in for the cover. Now the support bracket that attaches to that support for the glide, that one uses the longer screw. Now we're ready to put the drum back in. Now when placing the drum back in the dryer, we want to make sure that this lip at the rear captures both rear drum rollers. So supporting the weight of the drum with the belt, we'll fit it between the sides of the cabinet. You may need to spread those just slightly. And then we need to line up the rear of that drum to make sure it sits on those rollers. Just rotate it a couple times. Check inside, make sure it's sitting flush on that drum seal. Then we'll line up that belt with the marks that were on the drum. And then we're going to reach in and reattach it to both the auger pulley and the motor pulley. So reaching in on the right hand side, just grasp the belt, locate the auger pulley, lay that belt out over top of the auger pulley, and pull it in underneath towards the right push that outer pulley to the right to take the tension off the belt and wrap the belt around the motor pulley at the same time. Make sure we have the groove side of the belt against the drum and the motor pulley and the flat side of the belt against the outer pulley. We'll just rotate that drum a couple of times to make sure that it does turn the motor and blower wheel. And now we're ready to put the front panel back on. Now, as we tilt that front panel up against the cabinet, we want to make sure that we line up the hole on the back of that front panel with a locating pin that is attached to the cabinet. Also want to make sure we tuck that felt seal so it doesn't catch on the drum. And once it's in place, we'll install one of the mounting screws, and we'll do it on the opposite side that the switch is on. That'll hold the front panel in place. We'll go to the opposite side. Again, we'll need to make sure that we line up that locating pin with the hole in the cabinet. But before we press it up against the cabinet, we're going to take that switch and locate it in that spring bracket on the front panel. Now the easiest way to mount that is to open the door completely, and that will allow you to be able to manipulate that spring clip. Just spread them slightly, line up the push button with a hole in the front panel, and then snap it into place. Make sure that that clip captures both the top and bottom of that switch. You can then close the door up. 
Again, we'll make sure that that felt seal is outside of the drum area. And then we'll reattach the second mounting screw. Now next we'll take that harness retaining clip, we'll tuck that into the opening in the top of the front panel, snap it into place, make sure that the wires are away from the drum. Now we're ready to put the main top back down. So next we'll disconnect our lanyard, then we'll replace that rubber bumper. Just fit it back into that opening on the top of the cabinet. And we'll lower the top down carefully. We want to make sure that we engage those two clips. Now we're ready to push the dryer back into position. With the dryer back in place, we're now ready to reconnect the power and your repair is complete.